name is Henning Redler. I'm heading the workflow group with an Uh First of all, I want to show you just shortly um, members of our partner program, which we of course need to uh, have our files being posted in post production. So they, those companies um, are working on reading ARI RAW and can read ProRes and can read DNX HD. So this is a program which is constantly growing, which we are very happy of. And, um, gives us direct con contact, of course, to the post-production as well as to other users um, on location. So, for example, we have in the moment eight companies who are making recorders. Four of them have been certified uh, and there's a growing number of application manufacturers for remote controlling the Alexa cameras, as well as some other special partners where we sell the products like Fujin and that size or we of course use Sony SPS cards and so on. So certified uh, ARRI RAW recorders in the moment are those four guys, uh, the Astro, the Cineflow, um, the S2 and mainly and we also resell this product, the Codex digital onboard recorder. Uh, there are other applications pending, one um, third party is very close to that, we didn't make it now for the NAB show but I'm sure they will have that in the next weeks. So this is the ARRI RAW certification for the recorders, but we also do a certification process for post-production tools so that people in post-production are sure that they get uh, the right um, picture quality out of our ARRI files. In the moment we have five products certified, um, but there are much more who process uh, ARRI RAW pictures without certification. It is their choice. Every raw is an unencoded, unencrypted uh, format, so everybody who can write a debug algorithm can take our files. There is no hidden secret, and it is not um, enclosed to uh, to uh, people who get the Ari SDK. So everybody can work that uh, process those files, but those five have been certified, and six other companies are in the moment uh, working on that. And I'm uh, also sure that we have that in the next 14 days done, so then kind of the majority of the post-production manufacturers um, gets this little label here if they want to use that on their website. We released um, some weeks ago new SDKs, um, so the SDK is a programming part which goes into the color correcting tools um, so that vendors like Luster of Autodesk or Filmlight or Blackmagic Design can use our algorithms to process the ARRI RAW in case they don't do that by themselves. Now the big jump which we have done is that it is, everything is GPU based, so we are very fast, we achieve real time uh, on ARRI RAW and you can see that in our booth because on the ARRI RAW converter which is a small cost free uh, Macintosh based tool we achieve 30 frames per second rendering speed and if you go into a proxy mode, we can even go higher. So for people who just want to review ARRI files, we can go up to 40 to 45 frames per second, which is a big jump to where we came from on CPU, where we had like uh, six or eight frames per second. So ARRI RAW is uncompressed, and these are big files. Nevertheless, having new technology, they can be processed very, very fast. Uh, they, the systems run on those operating systems uh, so there's a variety of graphic cards. Um, this is of course a complex situation, um, CPU, GPU uh, operation system to match that on, on that, but we are constantly in uh, collaboration, for example, with NVIDIA, um, so that we, are, uh, that we can provide some configuration tables, what systems matches the other. In preparation is a beta test, because we of course, I'm continue working on the SDKs and in May we will start a beta test with a new debugger algorithm which will be first in the SDKs for area and later on also put into the Alexa camera so all cameras will be upgraded um, by mid of the year, I guess. And of course, we will also introduce ACES support in the SDKs and again in the area raw converter um, support for OpenAXR. Um, so that the latest and mo most modern color spaces, or more color space can also be supported by us. Uh, the ARRI RAW converter gets also a tool or a plug-in to export metadata. This is very common with the ProRes files, there we have a tool called Metadata Extract. 
and so you can pull out the metadata which you for example can use for visual effects like LDS data um, and can use that in your visual effect environment so this will also be possible with Arri Raw. Uh, the Arri Raw converter like I said is downloadable on our website and it's a cost free tool so it comes actually for free and there's a little misspelling I'm sorry for that. Now we already have seen this picture I want to talk a little bit more in depth on DNxHD because it is new um, to the Alexa since some weeks. Um, those are the three new output options which we have. Mark already named them. I want to go a little bit more into the DNX HD. <clears throat> there will be three flavors, two we have in the moment. This is the DNX 145 uh, and the 220X. The X indicates 10-bit. They're both 4 to 2 codecs. And with those guys, you can run the camera and the speeds, which you know, up to 120 frames if you have the high-speed high license. Uh, in fall, you will have the DNX HD 444 available. This is a 10-bit 444 RGB codec, which will be then comparable to the ProRes 4x4, which we run since two years in the camera. Important is that the picture quality has the same latitude, sensitivity, gamma, contrast and colometry, of course, as in progress recording. Uh, you can go easily into the Avid Media Composer, and this is, of course, the purpose of the DNX HD codec. So for those environments where people are keen to have MXF files or want to go directly into the Avid, um, you can link your files with a plugin which we provide on the website, um, and you need not to transcode uh, or to uh, change your files, you have just have to rewrap them uh, or you link them with the AMA plugin. Interesting is, of course, for um, big organizations like broadcasters who are achieving or who are keeping the rights of the footage they are shooting, that they have access to the files for a long time and therefore they, go, um, they tend to go to MXF files because this is an open industry standard as DNX HD also. Uh, it is registered at SMPTE, uh, so it is an open system, it is not proprietary, uh, and everybody will always have access to those files. They can easily run on different platforms, and um, so, for example, you can create MXF files on a PC, which is not possible with a QuickTime file, of course. Supported are Avid Media Composer 5.5 and higher, and um, the um, DNX license is has to be bought for the Alexa, for the Alexa Plus and M, and in studio and 4x3 Plus it is included. It's downloadable um, and payable via our web shop. You see the price here. Um, a little bit more info on the ProRes 4x3. Both formats, of course, go also, also on the S by S Pro cards in the camera, and 4x3 obviously is for mainly, mainly for anamorphic applications. Um, both formats can, of course, be used immediately in Final Cut Pro without any changes. You can also cut this uh, footage via AMA plugins in Avid Media Composer, but Avids are capable of uh, 16 by 9 HD only. So they will reformat um, those two formats and you have to later, later to do a, a conform in another system. So this is not a finishing system then compared to Final Cut Pro, which would be that. Thank you very much. And I